Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caroline. Um, you're probably bored of me saying this if you're a regular watcher of the videos, but I am a lecturer in physics at a UK university. Um, so these videos are all about university stuff. You know, the whole channel is student matters, what academics get up to. And this week, uh, I'm gonna open by chatting about a topic that actually came up in the comments. So thank you to the lovely person who posted this in the comments section. Um, like myself, you're a researcher in academia, and your question was, could we chat a little bit about research grants? And we can definitely talk about research grants because there's something I spend a lot of my time working on. Um, and I probably need to spend more of my time working on them if I'm being honest. So when you become a lecturer at a university, I think sometimes people think that you might get handed a bucket of money and that's your bucket of money to go off and do research with. And sadly, that's not how it works. So if you want to know more about how we get paid as lecturers, um, I'll put a link up to a previous video. But essentially, I get a salary every month and then there might be a small amount of money within the department that I can bid for to do research. But if I want to fund my experiments, my studies, my travel, if I want to fund things for my PhD students to do, if I want to buy equipment for master's projects, I need to win research grants. Um, and that is a very easy thing to say. Oh yeah, just go, just go win some research grants, you'll be fine. The art of winning a research grant, as I have found out, is quite difficult. It's challenging, it's complicated, it can be completely disheartening, and it can be amazing when you actually do get a research grant awarded to you. Um, I am in no means an expert of how you go about winning research grants. So before I became a lecturer in physics at a university, I spent a long time working in industry. And there I did win money. I know I wrote business cases, um, I had to go to customers to win money from customers in order to fund not only my own work, but the work of my team. So I'm used to the idea of writing documents, putting forward cases, talking in front of panels to try to secure funding and money. Um, when you come to academia, it's a, a little bit different, I guess, in the sense that, you know, I'm now applying to research grants for pots of money, um, and I have to follow the research grant process in order to stand a chance of winning some funds. Um, so yeah, in this video, I'm going to discuss things that people have taught me, so tips that other academics have shared with me, things that I've done wrong, which definitely didn't help me getting a research grant and I'm going to hopefully not do again, and just some general ideas and things we can do to help increase our chances of winning research grants. Because let's face it, winning money is difficult. You know, there's loads of universities, there's loads of lecturers and researchers at different universities, and we all think our project is the best project, we all think we should be awarded the money, um, and it's hard, and it's hard when you're new as well, when you're trying to break into an area or break into a community and you're not known necessarily by that community, you know, it, it can be tough. So, here are my tips and advice that I've picked up along the way so far as to how we can try to improve our chances to win a research grant. So my first tip is something that I thought would be obvious, but actually I still messed up, is know which pots of money you can apply for. And I say this because in my first year as being a lecturer, I got very excited. I found a pot of money. It was from one of the research councils. And I thought, yes, that, that aligns to my, my research interests and I'll try to win money to fund a PhD student and to fund some equipment. And at my university, you have to declare that you're going to be going forward into that, that research grant so that the university knows what we're all applying for. And so I said to the university, you know, I filled out the university form and said, I want to apply for this bucket of money. And then I got a lovely email back from a lovely lady who said, you can't apply for that research money. And what I didn't realise was that that particular uh, bucket of funds, only one person from each university can apply. And there'd already been an internal university competition and somebody had already secured the ticket to be our university person going forward to try to win that grant money. So I couldn't even take part. You know, I'd completely missed the whole internal university process. I'd gone straight to thinking I could apply for the research council, not realising that there was this university process I was meant to have gone through first. Um, and my university was so lovely about it. You know, they were so helpful and they were so kind. They put me on mailing lists. They, they got me information so I'd know when things were coming out. And it was completely my fault. You know, I'd completely missed the email that had said this deadline was coming up and there was an internal process. So lesson number one, and I, and I learned it the hard way, is no 
If your university or your institution has any internal process that you have to follow for particular research grants, pots of money, and, and make sure you follow that process. If I'd spent ages writing a huge document to find out I couldn't send it, I think I would have been probably more frustrated with myself than I actually was. So lesson number one is know your university processes before you even start applying for research grants. And then my second tip, I guess, is to consider where you're applying for the money. So when I joined university, I knew of the big research grant providers. So in the UK, we have these things called research grant councils um, and they run what we call challenges or themes or research areas. And if your research area aligns into that theme, you can then apply to try to get a share of the money they're offering for that particular call. Um, and I think initially I thought I should go for the big pots. You know, I should go for the big research grants, pots of money. I should try to win big because I wanted to show that I was a good early career lecturer. Um, and of course, the problem with doing that is those big pots of money are going to be very, very competitive. And then a colleague said, well, you don't have to just go for the big pots of money. You can also look to apply for the smaller research grants. Um, and in my case, that was really useful because applying for the smaller research grants, well, they're the ones that maybe aren't quite so competitive or maybe they're not quite as well advertised. So you've got a little bit more chance of getting your application through to the further rounds. Um, and they're also the ones that maybe don't have the internal processing that a university requires you to go through because they're more of a kind of a focused topic. So once I discovered that, it sort of changed, I guess, my research grant writing strategy. So then rather than just going for big research grants or what I perceived to be the bigger research grant areas, I started to look for other providers of money that weren't necessarily the UK research councils. Uh, and that can be industry. So industry can offer small pots of money. It can be charitable foundations might offer pots of money. It can be private people financing research um, and of course the big research councils. But for me, that gave me a broader range of pockets of money to go after. Um, just saying again, you know, I am, I am not the queen of winning research grants. You know, I feel very much in it with you guys, you know, sympathetic with you guys. I, I feel the pain of trying to win money, trying to secure money. But um, yeah, so just, you know, these, these are my kind of viewpoints. If you are a research grant winning person, please do put any ideas or comments in the suggestions box or the, the comments box below the video, because it's be so nice to share ideas. But anyway, on with what I've, I've discovered over the, the last few years. Um, I was very lucky at my university that I work in a very collegiate department and the other academics are very friendly, um, but not only are they friendly, they're generous with their time, they're generous with their contacts and they're generous with applying for buckets of money together. And one of the things that really helped me in my first couple of years of being a lecturer was more senior academic members of staff sharing their research grant with me, which is an incredibly generous thing for them to do. And I was very grateful that they did it. But essentially, I had um, a couple of cases where a professor was the principal investigator on a research grant. And that means that the professor had written the grant, they'd written the application, they'd applied for the money, and they'd been successful in this case. They'd won a large pot of money. And what was lovely was that they saw that I was an early career scientist and they said, well, your PhD student looks like it aligns to our, our research programme. Shall we kind of go together? Or in another case, actually, we've got a research bucket of money coming in with a PhD student. Shall we do that studentship together? Um, and that's that's very kind, generous, fantastic of them. Um, and it's, it's really good. You know, it's really useful. So it meant that I could... Uh, pick up PhD students perhaps at a faster rate than I would have been able to if I'd just been applying for research grants by myself. And it actually meant that within the first couple of years of being a lecturer, I had five PhD students. Um, and that's fantastic. You know, that means I've got five amazing researchers working on groundbreaking research, and it means we can get stuck straight in. And because I was able to link up with other professors, um, I was able to access some of their travel budgets, some of their money to buy equipment. It meant that not only could I fund the students, but we could actually fund their equipment as well and their research needs and their travel needs. So that is a fantastic bonus. If you've got collegiate members of staff or you've got people who are prepared to collaborate with you, that is a definite win. In a future video, I will talk about the other side of that. Though. I'll talk about how that can shape your research portfolio and what you have to be, I guess, wary of. 
Um, but for this video, you know, the message is, I guess, working with others and being in a team when you're going forward to research money is definitely a positive thing. Um, but of course, I wrote applications myself. Um, so sometimes I was writing an application for a research grant with a member of staff, so another colleague. Um, I teamed up with other lecturers and uh, I would write one half focusing on my specialism. Uh, so I work with like radiation and nuclear physics, so I would write the half of the proposal that dealt with that. And the other person I was working with would write the half that kind of fitted with their research. And then together we would show how if we worked together and shared a studentship and shared having some research money, we could do more if we were successful. Again, I'm lucky I've got an industry background, so I know colleagues who work in the business sector and we were able to apply together. Um, and what's good there is sometimes a colleague in the business sector can't be the PI. So sometimes there's like a rule that if you're working in business, you're not allowed to be the principal investigator on a research grant, but they can work with academia. So I could be the principal investigator, I could put in the application, um, but I could do it in partnership with a business collaborator. Um, because again, for the person reviewing your application, um, I guess it shows credibility. It shows credibility to the idea. Um, in the case of having a business partner, it shows that somebody actually is commercially interested maybe in your idea. Um, it shows that you might have industrial funding and support. So in lots of the applications I was putting in, I was asking for a certain amount of money from the research provider, um, but I was also saying, well, this company is also going to provide this amount of money, or I'm also going to be able to use this company's facility. And it just shows, I guess, the person I'm applying for the research money from that I'm serious about it and I've got serious backing from business to say that this is a good idea and we should be doing this piece of research. Um, the actual application form itself, I'll touch on it this morning, but I think it's probably worth a video in its own right. Um, so I'll do one of those coming up at some point. In my experience, which obviously is not massive, but in my experience, it goes one of two ways. They're either very short and very quick to write, or they're very long, very complicated and very time consuming to write. Um, the short and quick ones are great. You know, you fire off sometimes a couple of pages, a quick financial plan of what you're looking to do, and that's your application done. The ones for the research councils, at least here in the UK, have a lot more steps that you have to fit in. You know, there's a lot more boxes you have to tick. You have to explain your financial position, how you're going to fund the research in quite a lot of detail. You have to explain the research idea in quite a lot of detail. You have to show how you would collaborate and network with other people. And you have to show the impact of your research idea. And I guess that's something I want to touch on a little bit in this video is impact. I think is an important thing when you're writing a research grant. Um, it's becoming more and more important, it seems like the research councils. You need to show how your piece of research is going to have an impact. Now, it could have an impact on a particular sector of society. It could have an impact on changing people's awareness of something. It could have an impact on changing government procedure on how something is done. Um, but you need to show how your piece of research is going to have an impact and how you're going to make sure that impact gets heard. It's no good having an impact if it doesn't actually ever leave your lab. And so quite often you'll see research grants ask for how are you going to share your research? How are you going to promote your research? How are you going to let other people know about your research? Um, and outreach activities, you know, engaging with the local community, giving public talks, going to schools, putting things up on YouTube, all of these things are ways that you can show that not only are you committed to doing the research, but you're also going to be proactive in sharing your research findings for the benefit of, I guess, humanity, if you want to be grand, but for the benefits of the scientific community or whichever community you happen to work in. Um, so yeah, impact is an important one. I guess the other thing that's important and um, some senior colleagues have been, you know, really helpful when they when they chat to me about writing research grants. You have to show that you're the right person to do the work, you have the right expertise, you've got the right resources around you, you're in the right place to do it, and basically you are the person to do this piece of research. And I get it's so tough when you're at the start of your research career journey. Maybe you've had a PhD, maybe you've had a postdoc, um, maybe you've had other people then fund those positions, and now here's your chance, and you've got to justify why you're the right person now as a, as a professional academic to have that money awarded to you. Um, and I think that, again, is where conferencing helps, where networks help, where you can demonstrate that you've got other people in other universities who are interested in what you're working on, other people in your university who are interested in what you're working on. Um, that can all help, I guess, with your credibility as to why you're the person to do that particular piece 
of research. Um, I don't want to make this video too long. I mean, it's in danger of being too long already. So I'll probably stop for this one. Um, I just want to add by saying, you know, research grant writing is tough. It's so tough. You write something and you invest yourself in it and you think this is a really good idea. I want somebody to fund me a student and I want to be able to fund travel. And I want to go do this particular experiment and explore this particular area. Um, and in my case, you know, I used to get excited about taking ideas from one area of nuclear physics and applying them to a completely different sector. So maybe infrastructure or something completely different. Um, and you get so excited in the idea and then you put the application in and you get rejected. And, you know, it's, it's hard for people to say, oh, you know, you have to write lots of applications. You're going to get rejections and that's fine. And you'll win some money eventually. But it's still tough every time you get rejected because every time you get rejected, you've invested your time, your energy, your ideas into that application. And then for it not to get awarded funding is difficult. Um, so in a future video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I cope with rejection in an academic setting. Um, and that can be, you know, rejection from getting a research grant, not getting to give a conference talk. Maybe your poster doesn't get submitted. Uh, maybe as a student, you don't get the particular project you want to do for your master's project. So we'll do a whole separate video all about rejection um, and strategies for dealing with it within a kind of university setting. Um, but yeah, so in future videos, I'll pick up on that and I'll pick up on the actual art of writing the research grant itself. But I hope my tips and I guess ramblings about my experiences were useful this morning. Um, do keep leaving me any comments in the, the boxes below these videos. I do read them. I do pick up on your ideas, suggestions, things you want to chat about. Um, I'll be back on Thursday. We're not going to talk about research grants on Thursday. I'll give them a little bit of space. Uh, I want to share a little bit about what's happening actually in the university and the university calendar. So a little bit more of a regular vlog. And then don't forget coming up, I'm also going to chat later this month about CV writing. So if you're planning to write CVs, don't worry, that is coming up in a future video. But this video has got far too long, so I will stop. Um, I'll leave it here. Have a great few days at the start of this week. Like and subscribe as always, and hopefully I'll see you back here on Thursday. Bye.